So now that we have a basic understanding of the way that Python works and the way that it can be integrated within Grasshopper, we can actually start going through the first example, which is to create a kind of branching system or series of boxes. And I'm going to use this opportunity to introduce a really powerful uh, idea within programming, which is called recursion. And that is the idea of creating functions that then can reference themselves. So you can start to nest functions within each other. And this is really useful for creating this kind of fractal or branching geometries. And it's something that's fundamentally uh, impossible to do within Grasshopper, but we can do it within scripts. So this is the first kind of example where you can use scripting to do something or accomplish something that would be otherwise, otherwise impossible within Grasshopper. As I was saying before, we're going to use Python as little as possible. We're actually going to use it just to accomplish that recursion. And most of the geometry creation we're still going to do in Grasshopper because it's easy and it's really set up to do those things. So the system I'm going to develop will uh, basically take a point and then generate another series of points which will define some boxes in my model. I have one point here that's referenced within Rhino. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a system in Grasshopper for generating boxes from points. So if I have one point referenced here, I can um, create a, a move node. So I'm going to move this point kind of diagonally to specify the second corner of a box. So if this box is one of the corners, I'm going to move this um, to specify the other corner. So to do that, I'm going to create a vector x, y, z. That's going to be my translation vector. And then into x, y, and z, I'll just import input one parameter. And I'm going to input that into the x, y, and z parameters. So now if I change this, it'll just scale my box up and down, but it's always going to give me that diagonal. And from there, I can use the box two point command and pass in my original point and my new point and that's just going to give me a very simple cube box. Okay, So once I have that set up, I'm actually going to use Python to uh, generate a list of these first corner points and then the other corners and the boxes will actually be generated in Grasshopper. Alright, so to do this, I'm going to create a new Python node. I'm going to change this input to be start point. So again, you can change these inputs to uh, make it easier for you to work with in the script. I'm going to input that start point into my input. And then I'm going to double click here. And just like before, I'm going to import the Rhino script syntax library as RS. And then the first thing I'll do is I'll create a new parameter called first point. I'm going to coerce that into a 3D point and in that pass my input. So now I have this first point as a variable in my Python uh, script and that's relating uh, to the point that I'm inputting here. And then what I want to do is I want to create basically a list of points and I want to store them all in this A output and that's really going to drive the box geometry in my model. So to start I'm going to create a empty array for A. And I'm basically going to create a system where I iteratively add points to this list. And to start, I'm just going to append my first point to that list. So now if we hit OK, you can see that A contains just that one point. And now these, this, these are the points we're actually going to use to create our boxes. So right now it's the same thing because we're just passing that point through this, the node. Okay, so to start our recursion uh, logic for creating these points, I'm going to define a function. So again, define. I'm going to create a fun function called boxmaker, uh, which is going to make my boxes. And then into this, I'm going to pass my first point. So to start, I'm going to define this function to take the point that's input to add it to our list. So I'm going to actually move this append function here. So it's going to take that point, it's going to add it to this list A, and then it's going to take that point and move it vertically. 
to move a point, we can use a piece of Rhino script syntax. Uh, and we accomplish the move just by adding another point to it. So we'll create a variable called move point. And we'll take our first point, And to that, we'll actually add another point. And we're just going to declare this point with a point 3D function. And here we specify the three parameters. So you can think of this as kind of a translation vector we had here. So the vector has three parameters, x, y, z. And then to move it, you're actually adding that vector to that point. So we do the same thing here. We create a point 3D object, which will store four parameters. So we're going to move it 0 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction. We're just going to move it up by 2. And in order to use this point 3D, this is a function that relates to Rhino. It's not built into the basic Python, so we actually have to import the library that this function's in. So like I was saying before, a lot of what we do will be in this Rhino script syntax library. But there's a few things we also need from the basic Rhino library, uh, such as this point 3D function. So the library we want is actually the Rhino library, but we're not going to import the whole library. We're just going to import one piece of it, just the piece that relates to these point 3D objects. So to do that, we use a slightly different syntax that says from and here we'll specify the library. And the function we want is within Rhino library and it's within a subset of it called geometry. So geometry is kind of a subset of the bigger Rhino library, which relates to creating different pieces of geometry. And from that library, we're going to import one specific function, just the point 3D function. This is another way to do imports. If you uh, need a, like one specific piece or function from a library, but you don't need the whole thing. A lot of times you'll save space and time just by uh, importing that specific function. So when, once we import this, now we can use this point 3D in our script. This will basically create a new point, which is our first point that we passed into the function, uh, moved up two units. And from that function, we're going to return that moved point. And in order to actually run this function, here we just kind of declared and specified it. In order to have it execute, we actually need to call it from our main script. So here we'll call boxmaker. And into that, we're going to pass our first point. OK, so what's happening now is that we're running the boxmaker function. We're passing our point that we reference from our script. That's being passed into this function. It gets added to the output array, and it gets moved. And that moved point is returned here. So if we go to test. We see it looks the same. We still have only one point. That's because uh, we never output the result of this function. The move point is being returned, but nothing's happening to it. It's not being captured. So to capture the point, we can set up another um, variable. Say point result equals box maker. And at this point, we can add this to our list. But remember that our function is already adding whatever point is being passed to it into the list. So instead of um, typing code to add it to the list, we can just call the function again, but this time use our resulting point. Here I'll call boxmaker one more time, and now point pass in our result point, and hit test. So now that function is run two times. It took the first point, moved it, and then used the move result to run the function again. And you can see now we have two of these boxes.